Well, welcome back to sunny and finally getting warmer Fern Valley Farm. If you're new to this channel, welcome. My name is Vince. I say hi to all my new subscribers. I'm almost close to you. some of you guys' weather. Some of my people are on the East Coast. It's been 80, some are down south. I'm jealous, but it's supposed to be maybe 70 next week, so that's a good thing. So anyways, the whole, what I want to do is show you here, and I'll put the videos at the end of this. I'll put the links to it. If you look at my Christmas Day video setting this up, and then I think I did another one. I forget what it was titled, but I did like an update on getting this thing set up. Well, now we're ready for bees. I mean, in fact, I called uh, the local feed store up here uh, yesterday, and I'm like, are the bees still scheduled to be here on time? I've got two. I've got two two-pound packages of carniolas coming. They're gonna go in number six and number seven. Usually, my first year when I get a package, I just get a two-pound because it's cheaper, and I don't plan on taking honey off it. I let them just grow, like I did over there, and I let them grow and just get bigger and bigger and bigger. And then next year, I'll split them, make honey off them. It seems to work. <laughs> so hopefully, this year it'll do the same thing. So I've got two two-pound packages of carniolas coming. And they're gonna go right here in six and seven. Um, I, did, like I said, I called them yesterday. They're like, yep. She's like, oh, definitely. Uh, bees are agriculture. Agriculture is a necessity. It's one of our new words. And uh, <clears throat> they're gonna be here. They might, they might even be here this weekend. I'm like, oh, because <laughs> I, I had them. When you order from the feed store that I get them from, they, you know, you have like dates, early April, mid April, end of April. And I think I put mid April, because usually by then you're kind of safe on the weather. Uh, but she made it sound like they might be here this weekend, so I don't know. We'll see. They'll call me. Uh, so anyway, let me show you what I've got going here. I've got all this set up, ready to go. Six and seven are my two packages for Carniola, and then these four hives. Nine, I know, they're out of order. I'm missing number eight. Number eight's over there. <laughs> so uh, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve are my splits. And I want to just show you really quickly how I set this up. Okay, so here's the hive top feeder, obviously. Um, and like I said, in these high top feeders, I just take nail polish and I make lines. So when I dump the syrup in, it gives you kind of an idea how you can see how far they're drinking them down. Um, they're not really marked, you know, like per gallon or anything. They're just marked, just so you can see if they're drinking it down. I like these, these work really nice. So with my hive top feeder box, uh, let me put it up here, it's all wet still. Inner cover and frames ready to go. I mean, frames ready to go. Now you can see I've got some older frames in here. Um, some got comb on them. So what you want to do sometimes, this is what I do anyways, I'll checkerboard them. Like I got new ones, I've got new comb. There's some new comb, there's a little bit of drawn on the outside of this one. A little bit there, actually this should be turned this way. Always put your new, always put your drawn comb facing inward. So the, the, the frame that's got no comb at all on it, this to the outlet a little bit there, but I got old, I got some new, new, I've only got so much old comb, um, but you can see here, I've got drawn out comb. What's nice about using your drawn out comb is the bees don't gotta work as hard so fast. So anyway, what I'll do with them, and I'll do the video on it, when they come, I'll pull these frames out, dump the bees in, set the queen right there, obviously. Uh, feed them and off we go. So I've got a mixture of different frames in here I've got some more drawn out comb frames sitting over off to the side, but you can see I've got old comb from either dead outs or Some of these had moths in them really bad. I made a mistake last year Of leaving frames in empty boxes just in case I needed them while the moths got in them That was a pain in the neck. I had a ton of so I just scraped them all out But anyways, I've got a mixture of comb and the same thing is in this hive right here the inner cover on, these are my inner covers. If you haven't seen my video, go check it out. You know, I like the way these come out. Nice and solid. So this is ready to go. Put the inner cover, or put the feeder box on, put the feeder on. When the bees come, I'll dump the packages in, and I will fill this with syrup. Probably a gallon or two on either side. Um, the one-to-one -one syrup mix, which um, is what you want to feed in the spring, that will that really helps the bees uh, draw out new comb. On, 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 on brand new frames, the one-to-one -one mix, they really draw out good comb with the one-to-one -one mix on new frames. So anyways, let me show you that. 
Number seven here is set up the exact same way this one is. There's, there's no point in opening it. I mean, you already seen what that one looked like. Blank, blank foundation, drawn comb blank. I just checkerboard them. I'll do the same thing. I'll pull the middles out, dump all the bees in, put the frames back, put the queen in. She'll be in her cage. I'm gonna try and get a mark too really quick. So when I, depending on the weather, if it's kind of nice when they come, I'll mark the queen right away before I, I'll take her out of that cage, put her in another one, mark her, put her back in her cage, and then uh, wait three, well, you put the marshmallow at the end to let them chew their way out. So those two are set up for the new package. Now let me show you what I've got going for the splits. It, so these four hives right down the line are set up for splits. Same thing, uh, feeder box in the frame, inner cover. All right, what's different about this, you see there's only three frames in here. Usually when I do my splits, they're five frames. They could be maybe six. It all depends on what it looks like inside. But what I'll do when I do a split, I go into the hives, I find the queen, I make sure she's not on one of the frames I take. Then I take a frame of brood, cap brood, a frame of uh, a frame with larva in it, and a frame of honey. And I'll put that in right here in the middle. And I'll put these, I'll, if I have drawn frame comb, which I do right here, I'll put that on either side of it. You can see this one, they just started drawing out and they never finished it. This one was just an old frame that I cleaned out all the wax moths out of. Um, so what I'll do, one of these will probably come out. So I'll go a frame of brood, a frame of larva, a frame of honey, and a frame of, uh, and a drawn out frame. You can see this frame has got some, it's got some, some mold a little bit on here. I'll scrape all that out before I put them in. I mean, you can leave it too and the bees will clean it, but, uh. I might just, I'm, I'm going to scrape all this out. I just, I put this stuff out a while ago just to kind of set up, to get it set up, and I'll scrape all that out. And actually, if I have another frame that's better with drawn out comb, I'll put that here and I put this one to the outside. But what I do is I turn my 10 frame, my whole, my, what I do here is I, ten, I turn my 10 frame deep box into a five frame nuke. And the way I do that, so let's say we got three frames, three or four frames, I'll take one of these out. And then you got your five frames. We'll pretend like there's five. We'll pretend like there's three more frames there. If I took one of these out, and actually I could even leave it, it'd be six frames total. I made these dividers. See these? I got a divider. And these are really easy to make. I think I got a video somewhere on how I made these. These are really simple. All that is is scrap wood, you know, scrap pieces of strip. I've cut off of something. I took my router table, I made a notch all the way. This just quarter inch OSB. And for and I'll use OSB in here because this only stays in for a certain amount of time. I never use OSB for like boxes because it's this could flake apart with moisture, but for, for something like this, and it's only in here for a short period of time. So what I do, let's pretend like we got six frames. One of these one of these would come out. Pretend like I got six frames. Two empty, brood, cap brood, honey, and a drawn out frame. And then I got like a six one, let's say. And that's all right there in the middle. And then I put these dividers on either side. So I turned my 10 frame deep box into a five frame nuke. Or we'll call it a six frame nuke. It always depends. Sometimes it's five, sometimes it's six. It's never less than five. And I leave these dividers like this. And then as I do inspections, if they start filling out frames, I'll move these over. I'll add another frame, add another frame. Once they get a bunch of frames all drawn out, and there's a lot of, if, if you see a lot of cap brood in there, you know the hive is going to blow up at any point, then I'll just pull these out, put all frames in there, and go. But if it's still kind of small and kind of weak, I'll leave these in, I'll leave them in, and as it grows, I'll kind of slowly take them apart. I might even pull one out and just have frames to here and take this out. I want to give them a whole ton of room at first. Bees do better in closer areas or in close spaces. If you give them all this room with just a few frames and not much on it, it's just too much room. They do, not that they're not gonna live, um, but they just do better in tighter spaces. So that's why you take all this and condense it, and there you go. So I've got all 
the other three hives are set up the exact same way. I've got a couple of miscellaneous frames in each one. I've got the dividers in each one, the spacers, I've got the spacers in each one. Like I said, bees do better in tight areas. If you give them all that room and there's not much going on, and if it's warm out, if it's okay, it's not bad, but if it's cold, that could be a problem because they can't huddle and stay warm, it can't cluster. If it's like 80 degrees and you got all that space, I mean, it's fine, it's just, it's just gonna take them longer. But if you keep them tight, they, do, they grow and they develop, and they, they just do much, I should say develop, they just grow and they just do better in tight spaces. So that's why I take my, instead of putting them in a nuke, I just use these 10 frame boxes because then, like I said, as I go along here, I just keep opening up, then I'm gonna transfer them. They're already in the box. Instead of putting them in a nuke, which you can, and then transfer them to a 10 frame, you could do that too. I just like doing it this way. Because like I said, then they're already in the box. So I just keep moving the spacers over. I remember last summer with my Buckfast hive over there, um, that hive wasn't doing nothing. And the bees kept clustering off to one side. I'd check on them, the, the cluster would be, and that was a three pound package, I want to say. They clustered over to one side, so I moved them back to the middle. And I came back, and they kept, they kind of moved over again. So that I just, I just kind of took all the frames and shifted. I, I didn't separate any frames. I just took it all and moved it over to the middle. And then finally, and then they weren't growing very good at all. That queen wasn't laying. Well, the weather didn't help. It was lousy. Then all of a sudden, one day, I came out here to do something, and boom, it, it just had just taken off. There was just bees everywhere. And then they filled all the frames out. So that's why I like doing this. They're already in the box. I just leave them. So like I said, I'll start out. When you do your, when you do your splits, you want to frame a cat brood. You want a frame of uh, larva. You'll see the eggs. A frame of honey for something them to eat. Plus, I'm going to feed them. And then if you got an empty frame of drawn out, or if you got a couple of frames of drawn out comb, then you got your five, even six frames. And then I put my spacers, keep them all nice and tight, and I just leave them alone. And I'll throw a pollen patty in too, actually. I'll throw a pollen patty in there. Um, and I guess I did forget to mention, there will be bees on those frames too. <laughs> Obviously, when you bring your split over, you gotta have bees on it. Um, and one thing you could do is you could take your, you could take your bees, bring them over here. All the nurse bees will stay on the frames. All the all the uh, worker bee, all the uh, all the foragers. So I'm trying to say all the foragers. They'll just leave, and I'll go back to the other hive. Then you got a, then you got frames with all your bees on it. And if you want to bring some more frames over and shit, if you got a lot of bees in your hive, because obviously you're doing a split to to reduce it. Because if you don't, they're going to swarm on you. You could take a bunch of bees, shake them in here. The foragers are going to go back, but all the nurse bees will stay. Um, so that's just kind of how I do splits. I've even done it where I've taken the split. I've even taken where I've done the split, put the one box here, put the other box on the ground, make the split, put the frames there, move all the bees to where the split's gonna be, and I'll just leave it and come back in like a half hour because all the foragers just leave, and what you've got left in the box is all your nurse bees on your frames. Then I'll take that box and move it over here. So there's a couple different ways you could do it. And then I will requeen it. I'm not gonna do any, I'm not gonna do a walkaway split, which means you let the bees make their own queen, because I'm trying to get this thing to develop. I, want, I don't wanna wait to 30 days. When you do a walk away split, sometimes it takes 30 days. You gotta put the bees in there. You gotta wanna make a queen. She's gotta go out on her mating flight. Hopefully she comes back, <laughs> you know, and starts laying eggs and then there's your new queen. She could get eaten on the way. You never know, a bird can grab her. It, it, it works, it, it's not that it doesn't work. It does work, but I just don't wanna wait 30 days. I wanna speed this up a little bit. So I'm just gonna order my queens. There's a. I want to say it's called Oliveras out in California. I've had good luck with them before. They make really nice queens. Uh, you can get them marked. I forget, they're like $38 a queen marked, I want to say, which is kind of nice. Then you don't got to mess with it. Then they're here next day. And what I like about ordering my queens from California, from the hive to my hive is less than 12, it's just about 12 hours. They're guaranteed to be here before 10 o'clock the next day. So you can order them. In the afternoon, they ship them out, they overnight them, UPS. They overnight them, they're here guaranteed before 10 a.m. So you could be home waiting, you know your bees will be here by 10. Take your queens, bring your cages over here, put them in, good to go. Not that getting them from a feed store is bad, but when they, you know, the feed stores or wherever you get queens, they order them, and sometimes the queens, by the time they leave, they get to the store, they've been sitting in a box. Now they're sitting in the store waiting for somebody to buy them. Generally, people buy them pretty quick, but you still got times where they're just sitting in their, you know, you're just sitting in their cages in the store waiting to, to be sold. This way, and they put nurse bees in with them too. This way they ship them, they're here by 10 o'clock. I like to say from, 
within 12 hours from the time they're pulled to the time they're in the hive is 12 hours. You can see the tags I got on here. It just makes it really easy because how many of us, raise your hand, <laughs> forget who's in what as far as queens go. Now these here, these are all set. Obviously C stands for carniola, buckfast, means buck or B means buckfast, C means carniola. If you got an I, that's Italian, Russian, whatever. I pretty much, I pretty much like doing carniola because they're really hardy and they grow really fast. Carni carniolas grow really quick. They can be a little mean in the fall, but you know what? I don't mind mean as long as they're doing their job. If you want to be mean, that's fine, but hopefully you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. Um, now some of these, now like I can't get a buckfast queen. It's hard to find them, but they say the Italian queen is the closest to the buckfast queen. So what I would do on this tag, is, this is coming from a buckfast split, from over there on the back of this I would put an I for Italian. That means there's an Italian queen in here and a buckfast hive. Or if you take your, your carniola split, if you got a C on there, um, if you get a hybrid queen I'll put an H for hybrid. That means it's kind of a mixture. If it's an Italian queen I'll put an Italian on the back of it. This way you kind of know what's what. All them hives over there that are doing really well, there's different, there's different letters on the back of them. Um, depending on what kind of queen was put into them. If you go from carniola to carniola, then obviously it just stays C. So this just kind of helps keep track of what you're doing. Plus I've got it all written down. I've got log books and it's all written down. Requeen them. And I'll, like when I get my queens, when I, when I have my queens shipped in, you could take the cork out, put the, put the uh, marshmallow at the end, or you can leave it sealed and just release them in three days. You want to leave them in there so the bees can get acclimated to the new queen and they got to accept her you don't want to just take a new queen and just dump her in there not that you can't and it works but you're better off putting the queen in the cage leaving her there and you can tell right away if they're accepting her all of a sudden the bees will just be all over it if they're not trying to sting her through the cage that's a good sign um so you just leave her in there for a couple three days let them accept her you're good to go so like I said, now we're just kind of waiting for the bees. They should, I think they might be, this is the first weekend of April. Today is actually, I hate giving dates out sometimes because by the time these videos get posted, but today's April Fool's Day. It's April 1st. Um, so they might be here this weekend. Uh, that's according to what she said yesterday. She's gonna, and what they're doing, and what the feed store here is doing, they're only allowing five beekeepers at a time in the store to pick up their queens or their uh, bees, and that's fine. They got like a big garage area. You go get your get your bees, go pay for them, and you leave, and it, it'll work. It's fine. She said it's been working really well, actually. Um, I, I guess they had a shipment come in last week. So, anyways, and then she said it worked out good. So they might be here this weekend. Um, so they're ready. They're ready for my packages. They're ready for splits. But like I said, the splits won't be until end of April, beginning of May. Pet weather pending, you know. So anyways, I wanted to do the update video on this because like I said, you, if you go back and see it now at the end of these videos, at the end of this video, wait till this is done, watch the whole thing, don't leave yet. Um, you'll see, I'll put the links to the last two videos on this. Christmas day was beautiful out here, I couldn't believe it. I'm out here Christmas day working, it was great. Watch that video, you can see how I was setting all this up. And then I had another update, one that I can't remember the name of it on this second thing, but that'll be end of the end of this uh, video. So anyways, hopefully you like this video. Hey, do me a favor in the comments below, let me know how you guys do your splits, if you got new packages coming, when you do your splits, depending on where you live. Uh, let me know in the comments below, I'm just kind of curious. Like I said, we all learn from each other here. And do me a favor, hit this subscribe button right here. Subscribe to this channel, I really, really appreciate the support. Like I said earlier, I thank all my new subscribers. You guys all know who you are. Subscribe to the channel, you'll hit the little bell Hit the little bell. <laughs> when you're looking at yourself, it's when it comes out on camera. Hit the little bell next to the subscribe button. You'll get notified when these new videos come out. Thumbs up are always appreciated. And I will talk to you guys later. All right, bye.